Welcome back to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Is our world religious or not? And do we get the real picture of it from journalists? We recently sat down with Paul Marshall, distinguished professor of religious freedom at Baylor University, during the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, D.C., to find out more. And Paul, with the pandemic in China especially, how has the human rights or religious freedom community been affected? Has it worsened or maybe have more people turned to faith from what you've seen? Certainly the restrictions uh, because of COVID um, hit the religious communities hard. They got closed down in a very draconian fashion. Uh, perhaps even, uh, that's true of the society at large, of course, but they're even more so. But it's hard to separate that from the sort of general background of increased repression over the last 10, 15 years, uh, particularly when she has been in power. Uh, you've had that you know, continuing repression of Falun Gong, Falun Dafa. Uh, then, you know, that new trend with the repression of the Uyghurs. Um, continuing repression that to suffocate, destroy sort of Tibetan culture. And then with the, uh, with the Christian churches, probably the largest religious minority, maybe up to 100 million, um, you know, restricting those, seeking to close down any independence, um, arresting pastors who won't toe the party line, demanding that churches have pictures of she inside them instead of pictures of Jesus. So it's hard to know whether the COVID was just a sort of continued that trend or it was a blip, but certainly um, religious repression in, in China now, I think, is, is the worst it's been since the 1970s. And Paul, speaking of independent observers, I think you have a book uh, from 2009 called Blind Spot, like when journalists don't yes. understand religious persecution. Yep. So tell us about that. What are you seeing? The um, journalists tend to have a secular mindset. Uh, needn't be personal. They could be a believing Christian or a Buddhist or whatever. But in their work, in their profession, religion isn't really a part of it. And there's a tendency to think that when something is apparently religious, uh, we should look for the real reason. And the real reason is underneath. It's, it's economic, uh, or it's political, or it's just a power struggle. Now, we've got to be honest, a lot of things which claim to be religious are power struggles. People who claim to have a major theological dispute just don't like each other, or one wants to be number one. So that, that can happen. But it's taken as a systematic reading that uh, religion is an epiphenomenon. It just sits on top. The real dynamics are underneath. We're finding this, for example, well, in understanding China. I mentioned that the Chinese take religion seriously. It, it, it can overthrow governments. Um, uh, one famous example was with um, Iran, um, before the Iranian Revolution, before the Ayatollah Khomeini came in, and we discussed this in that book, Blind Spot. And um, uh, one theorist, Edward Lutwak, very good international relations theorist, suggested, this is before the revolution, suggested to the CIA that they should study the ideas of the Ayatollahs and the Grand Ayatollahs, because these seemed to be the major figures behind what was going on. And the CIA turned that down. It would said it would be mere sociology, whatever that means. Uh, as far as the CIA was concerned, the major powers are sort of the merchants, the big industrial classes, the military, well, the students might, might be doing that, workers and so on. But yeah, you know, a bunch of crazed clergymen had no effect. And um, so they, they were totally ignorant of, of what happened and didn't expect the revolution. Um, to give, give the example, you, uh, uh, a major factor there was that um, the Iranians took over the American embassy and took dozens of hostages. And this was 
many factors, but one reason they didn't take religion seriously, so they didn't think these Ayatollahs were a threat. So we give, um, boy, a, a, a host of examples that, just one more you might remember, in, uh, in India, in um, see, about 2009, a bunch of terrorists hit Mumbai and they um, uh, killed people in the luxury hotels, a lot of Westerners, and then went down this labyrinth of streets and attacked this house, which was an Orthodox Jewish house. And they went in there, they tortured the people and killed them. And many of the media said this you know, indication, no indication of a motive. It says, I'll tell you one, they were Jewish. And these were, you know, sort of ISIS, Al-Qaeda type terrorists, and that's what they do. In a city of 15 million people, there's one Shabbat house. You're saying, oh, by luck, they managed to find it? So, no, they're hunting it up. And lastly, what is the cost to society if we get our news from the media, but reporters are maybe skirting around the religious aspect? Um, that we don't understand the world we live in. We live in a very religious world. When you take a survey, what religion are you now? 25% of people will say none. It's hard to know what that means, because quite a few of them go to church. Uh, or ones that don't are believers, but they're unchurched anymore. You know, people don't join things anymore. So they may be very religious, but now it's very private. You know, in American statistics, you know, half the people who describe themselves as atheists pray regularly. So this is a whole jumble as to, to what that means. But it, it's a pretty religious world, and outside of America it's a very religious world. And much of our media is, is missing it. So we're getting a distorted picture of the world. Well, Paul Marshall, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.